Hello there folks. Hey, this is Joe Azu here. Hey, today's quick video is going to be uh, using the emulator in Crimson 3.2. This is a new feature that's been added back to Crimson. We had it way back in Crimson 3.0 and now we've got it back in Crimson 3.2 and that is the use of the emulator. So we're going to build a simple database here to uh, uh, try this out. So I've got Crimson 3.2 open. I am running the latest build as of today, so if I go to the help pull down and go to about, you can see that I'm running build 3.2.1004.0 uh, on the website. They'll always have the latest, so uh, you'll want to always update. Um, and also on the website, <clears throat> they give you uh, release notes of what was updated. So this was updated here, but whenever you watch this video, there might be new ones and so forth. So anyway, go to Redline's website, get Crimson 3.2 and get the latest. So I'm going to, for this application, I'm going to open Crimson 3.2. <clears throat> I'm going to go to the file pull down here and do new. And I'm going to select, for our example, uh, I want to use a CR3K HMI. And I want to use the 7-inch. I'm going to choose a CR3K 7-inch. You can change some resolution here. I recommend the 800 by 480. I recommend all the default for this test. So I'll click the OK button. And now I've got this in Crimson 3.2 as a CR3K 7-inch. So what I'm going to do is I want to make some tags that we can play with. I'm going to go over to the left side and click on Data Tags on the left side. And then if I just click the New button here right below Navigation Pane, I'm going to get a new Tag 1 here. And I'm going to rename this guy. I'm going to put my cursor here. And I'm going to change the name to Tag underscore 1. Therefore, when I do a smart duplicate, <clears throat> it will automatically increment the tag number. Now, notice the color is blue here. It's an internal tag. I want to take advantage of one of the internal functions Redline has that will just do an up-down type counter. There are many ways to do this, but they've got a tag here that does it. So if I go to the lower right-hand corner of Crimson and click on System, Expand the Functions tree, and then if I slide down and go to the tag data, there's a function here called get up down data. This guy right here, and there's other ones in here. But <clears throat> if you right click on this and do show help info, it'll take you to a document to the page on. If I make it a little bigger, you can see that this function will either do an increasing value or decreasing. And basically, I'm going to use another internal function called discount. And then you put the limit here of what you want it to go to. So I'm going to close that, go back to Crimson. And you got two ways of doing this. One is you can just simply grab the get down data function over here on the right side and just drag and drop it right here, boom, on the word source. Or you can hit the pull down here and do uh, general and you can type it there. So I'm going to just drag it from here and drop it right there, boom. So notice inside here, the parentheses, you got zero comma zero. Well, I'm going to put my cursor right here where the parentheses, right before the comma. Delete the zero and do disp, D-I-S-P, C-O-U-N-T. That's the function. And then I'm going to go over here to where the zero other zero is. And I'm going to change that to a 100. Then if I typed all this correct, I'm going to hit the enter button and it should turn blue. If you type something wrong, like uh, discount one, and I hit enter, you'll see that Crimson will bark at you. It says, wait a minute, couldn't find that variable. Did you either type it wrong, or do you want me to declare it? Well, I typed it wrong. That's what I did here. So I want it to be just discount, not discount one. Boom, hit enter, turns blue, it's good. Notice also that the tag over here turned to a yellow, because it's a function tag equal to this simple function. Again, this thing is supposed to supposedly count up and down from 0 to 100. So now that I think I know that's what it's going to do, I'm going to go to the Format tab here. And on the Format tab down here where it says Minimum Value, I'll put 0. And for Maximum Value, put 100. That kind of sets some limits here, particularly if we want to make a chart or something move up and down. There's some limits. Now, if you go over here to the left, click on your Tag 1, this little button right here is the Smart Duplicate. Boom. You can make a smart duplicate, and now it basically made a copy of it. But on this one, I'm going to go back to the data tab. Instead of it going to 100, let's change it to 50. So change the 100 there to a 50. Boom. 
and then click the Format tab and change the 100 down here to 50 as well. All right, let's go over here to the left and go to Display Pages. Here's the blank page that all default databases have. I'm going to delete the Hello World off of here, and then I'm going to change the background of this color of this page to white. So right-click anywhere, go to Properties, change the background color to white, click OK. Now I want to see if this is going to work. I'm going to test it. So I'm going to go over to Data Tags on the right side, and I'm going to drag Tag 1 down here, and I'll drag Tag 2 over here, like this. They don't have to be lined up, but something like this. Now I want to make the font of this bigger and bold it, so I want to show you something. If you roll in, you can zoom in like so. You can also use the plus sign here to zoom in and minus as well. But if you have a mouse with the roller, just roll it. So I want to use advantage, take advantage of a little pop-up. So if I click anywhere else, I call this lose and focus. I'm clicking here. Then if I just hover over this and I get the blue box, I haven't clicked on it. I'm just hovering over. And if I happen to hover over on one of the halves, if I click one time, this ghosted box comes up. I'm going to go ahead and click the font bigger all the way to that button there. And then capital B for bold. Click away. Notice I have the hazard signs. I'll click on it one time. And I'll make this guy be a little bigger like this. Supposedly, it's supposed to go from 0 to 100. <laughs> now, I want to apply those same attributes to this guy. So I'll right-click on this one. And I'll say copy from. Copy all formatting. Click that guy. Boom. I'll move this guy here. And then, of course, if I right-click on this one, do same size as this one. And I can do that. Okay. So what we want to test this right now. So team, up here there's a series of icons. Of course, the magic Shazam button is the update button. But this one here, one, two, three, four, four, five icons from the uh, from the Shazam is the emulator button. So if it clicked where it has a yellow or orange, whatever color it is, brown town background, that means it's turned on. You can also go to the link pull down, go down here to options. And you can check Send Emulator here as well. That does the exact same thing. By the way, if you're in here, you can hit the Configure button. And you can actually allocate your Ethernet port to work or other serial ports and so forth in here. I'm going to click the OK button. I do want you to notice that the emulator execution is limited to 15 minutes. So if you do leave it up and running, after 15 minutes, it'll start to uh, kind of beep or something. And then it does close. And then you just reopen it again. It runs again. So I'm going to click the OK button. In theory, I got this turned on. I'm going to go ahead and hit the Magic Shazam button. Now, if this is the first time you ever do this, there will be a pop-up for another software package. I can't think of what it's called. PCAP or some P. Anyway, go ahead and install that other package that it installs, and then it should run. So I'm going to go ahead and click the Update button. Let's see what it does. So I've been using this before, so I'm going to re-download here. That was the previous one, but let's see what happens here. So now it's up and running. Of course, it's on my taskbar here. And here it is. You're looking at the emulator. So uh, it's running. If you want to close it, I don't think this is going to show up in this video, but down on your taskbar, I'm hovering over it right here. If you right click on your taskbar, you can do a close window and that'll close it. Now, graphically speaking, that's not very impressive. So, team, if we go here to primitives on the right and go into uh, gauges, for instance, Got a bunch of gauges here. Doesn't matter which one you pick. They're all the same as far as operation. So if you click on any gauge one time, you'll see there's a bunch of different variations of which you can do all kinds of changes. I'm going to drag this guy out here. And then I'll go up and I'll drag out a different one for right here. Now I want this one to follow this guy and this one to follow this one, this tag. So I'm going to double click on my gauge on the left side. Now you watch plenty of videos or been to a class, you know that my biggest thing I like to advocate is the drag and drop ability in Crimson. So I'm on the format tab for this gauge. In the value field, I want this to follow the tag values for tag one. So I'm going to grab tag one and drag it, boom, right there, and that filled it in. Notice the gauge moved. Now, if you look here, you can kind of see the grayed out zero to 100, and that's true. That is what this tag goes through. but I want these two variables to come from the tag value. 
not be concrete stone. So if I change this to 75, now the max will be 75. And if I change the minimum to 25, that's it. But I want these to get from the tag level. So I'm going to drag tag one right here, boom, and right here as well. And then I need to make this the min. This should automatically do this someday. We need to fix this in crimson, but we haven't yet. But So I'm going to put my cursor here where it says minimum. And I'm going to click a few times to where I finally get my cursor blinky blinky there. And then I'm going to do dot min, enter. That's a property that you can grab from the tag base. And then I'll do the down here for the maximum. I'll do dot max, enter. Hey, that one's done. I'm going to click the OK button. And then I'm going to double click on my other gauge and do the same thing, link this to tag two. So I'm going to drag to, to, tag two right here. Boom. I'll drag it down here and in here. And then I need to make these be both the dot min for this one. And this guy is the dot max, dot max. Of course, if you spell it wrong, Crimson will politely tell you, wait a minute, and then you know that we spelled it wrong. So uh, one of these days I'd like, and there are other packages, team, that when you do the dot, for instance, VB, if you're programming Visual Basic or something, or codices, it actually brings you down the parameters, like a listing dropdown. I'd like to see us add that someday in Crimson. We'll see. Maybe we will. All right, I'm going to click the OK button. There's my two gauges. Let's go ahead and download this. I'm going to just hit the update button. Notice my emulator is still turned on. I'll hit the update button. Let's see what it does here. Look, there is my two graphs. Notice the one on the left is going to go from 0 to 100, and the one on right is going to go from 0 to 50 because of the way we use the get up down function. That's pretty cool. So if you want to leave the, the emulator run, you can or you can close it. I'm going to go back to Crimson. The emulator is still running in the background. I don't know if you can tell, but there's the little black thing down here. It's still running. Anyway, I want to add one more thing here. I'm going to go over to Primitives, go to the Home Directory, and for Giggles, go into Core Primitives, and I'm just going to grab, click on a rounded rectangle, any shape. They're all the same, but I'll click on this, and no matter what color, I'll drag one out here, I'll drag it like this, and then I'll drag a different one over here and line it up like this. I just want to show you a different concept here. So I got the red one on the left and the blue one on the right. So I'm going to double click on the red one, and I want this thing to fill from bottom. So right here on the figure tab where it says fill mode block, hit the pull down, choose fill from bottom. I'm going to grab tag one and drag it right here. Boom. See how this one grabbed the min and max correctly? That's what the gauges need to do. One of these days, we'll fix that. I'm going to click the OK button. I'm going to double click on the blue one, and I want that to associate with tag two. Well, let me change the fill from bottom here. There we go. Tag two, boom. Click OK, and let's download that and see what happens. Hey, that's pretty cool. So I'm going to make some other videos using the emulator. Uh, for testing, but I just thought I'd leave this with you as a nice way to, to play with the emulator and try it out. Not everything might not work in the emulator, but uh, certainly give it a try, and uh, you can play with it. I've, I've, I've been doing some building some databases with it lately because I didn't have the same hardware somebody had, and it's worked great for testing so far. Anyway, just something to play with. Y'all have a great weekend. See you later. Thanks.